Thank you. Um, this, uh, this is joint work with uh, Professor Patrick Lam from uh, University of Waterloo and with Professors uh, Thorsten Hoffler and uh, Martin Vetchev from ETH Zurich. Uh, Large-scale parallel systems are becoming more and more important for uh, data centers, scientific computation, and uh, other big data applications. Uh, the traditional models to program these parallel systems are, are uh, message passing and TCP IP sockets. These models were designed for traditional networks such as Ethernet. Uh, sorry? However, uh, remote direct memory access networks, uh, which have been used in uh, high performance computing for years, are gaining quick adoption in, uh, in modern data centers. Uh, these uh, these uh, RDMA networks provide uh, more performance than uh, the traditional networks at a similar cost. To extract most of the performance from these RDMA networks, the programmer has to use remote memory access interfaces. And uh, the goal of our work, uh, the, the focus of our work are these RMA interfaces. Let's have a look at a simple uh, RDMA system here, consisting of two nodes, the one on the left and on the right. Each, each node has a memory, a processor, a, perifer a peripheral uh, component interconnect express card, and a network interface controller. Assume that uh, using the, the DMAP uh, RMA interface, the, the first CPU executes a GET statement, which will read the variable Y from the memory of process two and store it in a variable X at process one. The first step is to, for the first CPU is to issue a read request. The path of this read request is shown in red here. Once the CPU has issued this, uh, this request, it is free to execute other statements asynchronously. After the read request is executed, uh, there's a second request, the right one, that uh, copies the value of Y to, to variable X. Uh, notice that uh, both of these uh, requests bypass the, second, the CPU of the second node. Uh, thus uh, enabling performance gains. Overall, these uh, uh, RMA systems enable low latency and high bandwidth, so today latencies of one microsecond are possible. Uh, moreover, this uh, RMA functionality is widely supported because of the simple hardware requirement and uh, it, it is present, for example, in Cray, Ares and Gemini network, InfiniBand, IBM BlueGene, Perk, and others. Uh, however, uh, the current state is that each of these uh, networks uh, provides its own uh, RMA interface. For example, for InfiniBand networks, we have IBV verbs library. For Cray networks, we have DMAP, uh, DMAP, the DMAP library, and there are also other libraries such as Portal 4. Uh, the problem is that there does not exist a standard memory model for RMA systems and uh, the existing documentation of these libraries uh, provide informal memory semantics. So our goal is to formalize uh, RMA uh, system, to, to give a formal model for RMA system. And uh, in this work, uh, we, we have uh, the following two contributions. So first, we propose uh, core RMA, which is a model that captures the main, the main functionality of, uh, of uh, existing RMA libraries based on their documentation and uh, based on uh, the contacts we had with uh, various uh, network experts. Uh, so core RMA consists of a simple language and its axiomatic semantics. And the second part of our contribution is to implement uh, an evaluation framework 
that we use to see how, how precise is our model and how well it uh, captures the actual behaviors of RMA system. Uh, while evaluating this, uh, how, how well our model uh, captures the RMA behaviors, we identify, uh, we identify uh, contradictions between the existing documentation of RMA libraries and the actual behaviors of networks. Okay, so, so the first part is to introduce this core RMA model and uh, for us, we identified the seven types of statements, local read and local write, remote get and put statements, remote get accumulate, remote compare and swap, and flash statements. For, for each of these RMA, for each of these core RMA statements, we have a corresponding uh, co uh, function call in each of the libraries that we considered. For example, in our work, we considered IBV verb for InfiniBand, DMAP, and Portal Force libraries. Uh, next, we move on to the semantics of core RMA. The first step is to, uh, is to split each remote statement into its corresponding actions. For example, a get statement is split into a e-read from the remote uh, from the remote location and then uh, an e-write action. Similarly, a put statement is uh, split into an e-write action and a remote e-write action. Uh, next, we define uh, three relation over these actions. The first relation is program order, which orders actions issued by the same uh, process. The second relation is the read from relation from a write to a read and uh, this means that B reads the value written by A. And, and finally, that happens before relation. A happens before B, if it is guaranteed that the effects of A are visible to the action B. Uh, finally, we, we constructed four axiomatic rules that define the happens before relation uh, based on uh, the other relations. So here is an example of one such uh, rule that, uh, that uh, that shows how uh, the in-order routing guarantee that is provided by RMA libraries is captured by, by our framework. So the rule says that if we have two remote actions, order by program order, and uh, these two actions target the same remote process, then these two actions are, uh, are in happens before relation. Uh, certain libraries, such as uh, DMAP, enable the programmer to uh, activate or deactivate this uh, in-order routing guarantee. This uh, property is easily captured by our framework, which allows to uh, add or remove this, uh, these rules to, to our uh, original set of rules. We will now show several other rules on a small example. So consider this core RMA program with uh, two processes. The first process has variable x initialized to 1, the second process has variable y initialized to 0. The first process just uh, reads the value of x into the local register A, and the second process executes a put action which uh, reads the value of uh, y and puts it remotely in variable x at P1, then <coughs> executes a get that reads the value of x at P1 and stores it in y, then a flash statement, and then uh, it finally reads the value of y in the local register b. And the question we ask is what are the expected outputs, uh, the expected values of reg local register a and b according to our core RMA model? Um, so as mentioned in the previous uh, presentation as well, uh, the way to do this is to iterate over all the RF relations and see which ones are uh, are feasible in core RMA, and uh, we define that uh, an RF relation is feasible if the resulting happens before relation is uh, acyclic. Uh, so the first step when applying this semantics is to to split the remote statements in the corresponding actions, and the vertical uh, black line denotes that uh, these two actions were generated by the same remote statement. Let's now pick one of the possible reads from relations, which is shown in purple here, relating uh, write to read. 
the program order for this example just relates the actions of the second process and uh, to simplify the, the presentation, I will uh, remove it uh, in the following slide. The first rule that we can apply uh, for this example is uh, the rule that says actions generated by the same remote statement uh, are related with happen by it happens before. So the read action happens before the write action. Uh, I, I present the rules in this uh, informal way, and but our paper contains a more formal version of these rules. So for this rule, there will be uh, two happens before ordering added to the example. Another rule we can apply here relates uh, actions before a flush with, uh, with the flush action. So if an action is in program order before the flush, then it is also in happens before if the flush and the action have the same uh, remote process. Uh, notice that uh, in this example, the happened before rules and the previous one as well does not depend on the read from relation. So this happens before relation will hold <coughs> for uh, other read from relations as, as well. So this rule adds the, the ad additional two happens before rules. And finally, we have a simple rule that says that flash, any flash that happens in program order before a local read is o also ordered with happens before. This will introduce some nice uh, disordering here. Similarly, if we continue applying core RMA rules for this specific reads from relation, we will see that the, happen the resulting happen before is acyclic. Therefore, this uh, reads from relation is accepted by core RMA. And uh, this leads to the uh, expected output A is 1 and B is 0. Uh, let's now illustrate uh, our core RMA rules for a, for a second possible read from relation. So I will just keep the happens before relation since they were independent of, of the read from. So the second one, you, you see it uh, again with the uh, purple arrows. And for this case, one rule that we have in our model and we can apply that uh, refers to two write operations and the read operation and says that if W1, if R reads from W1 and W1 happens before W2, then the read happens before W2. We instantiate this uh, rule for the initial value of X is one here for the E write, and the read will be this E read relation. Applying it will result, this happens before. So the read happens before the write. And now we apply the rule we saw before, the in order routing which uh, orders uh, remote statements that have the same remote process. So for example, here, this, this E read and E write. And we see that if we consider in order routing, here we obtain a happens before cycle. Here. And uh, so, so in this, uh, for this RF relation, we have two cases. If we have the in order routing, then this uh, RF relation is not allowed, but for uh, if we ignore in order routing, then it is allowed and leads to the uh, expected output A is zero and B is one. If we continue iterating over the reads from relation, we will obtain that for this example, there are two <coughs> possible outputs if we take into account in order routing and uh, four <coughs> possible outputs without it. Uh, now that we showed our core RMA semantics, we we move on to the evaluation framework that we implemented. The evaluation framework takes as, as input the core RMA axiomatic model that we defined and the test parameters such as, let's say, the size of the test and, uh, and uh, gives them to the already existing uh, constraint solver called Alloy. So using Alloy, we can automatically generate core RMA tests, core RMA programs and as shown before, we can automatically uh, compute the expected outputs for, for all of these tests. Now, these core RMA tests, we cannot run them directly on network, so we have a translation phase which generates uh, three C programs. One C program for each library that we consider, so a C program for DMAP, one for the verb uh, framework, and one for portals. Once we obtain this test, we run them on uh, hardware networks and we record the, the observed output. 
in the end, we compare the expected outputs that we got with using our core RMA framework with the actual uh, outputs. So using this, uh, using our framework, uh, we generate automatically over 7,000 litmus tests. And uh, each test, after generating the SIP program, we, we run it 10,000 <coughs> times on the hardware network. And uh, the duration of running the test is about 20 seconds per test. Notice that this is a, an important difference compared to other, for example, multi-core processor memory models where tests are run much faster. And uh, the reason that it takes us 20 seconds per test is that the setting up the connection in RMA systems and then ending the connection uh, takes uh, longer. Given this, uh, this constraint, we have to generate our tests carefully. And uh, we develop a method where each test focuses in particular on one rule of our core RMA model. So for example, for this rule that I sh I've shown before, we generate all the tests that use this rule. For example, with one process up to eight actions, all the rules, all the tests up to eight actions, and we obtain 164 such tests. And for two processes, all the tests up to 10 actions, and we generate 260 tests, and all these tests are guaranteed to, to exercise this rule. Um, then we automatically compute the expected outputs for all these tests, and uh, this is just a metric. Uh, over 3,000 tests have one expected output from the ones we generated, then 1,000 tests uh, for each two, three, and four <coughs> expected outputs, and around 1,000 tests which have five or more expected outputs. The maximum test, we have uh, 19 expected outputs for, uh, for certain tests. The first research question we, we ask is, uh, can we identify a contradiction between the existing documentation of libraries and the actual behaviors of RMA networks using our framework? And uh, the answer is yes. For uh, 135 tests, we observe on, uh, on the actual outputs uh, results that we did not uh, uh, get by using our core RMA rules. And uh, we identified the reason is that even if we enable the in-order routing, uh, still this one was not expected, it was not uh, enforced by the network. So one of the, uh, one example test one of the 135 tests is actually the running example that I've shown before, for which we obtain all the four possible outputs, even if we enable the in-order routing. Where and we, there we should expect only two. We reported this uh, violation to, to Cray, because it was on the Cray networks, and uh, this, uh, this violation was confirmed, and uh, the action to be taken is that uh, in the next revision, the existing documentation will be fixed. The second research question we, we address is how many of the expected outputs of core RMA are actually encountered in this uh, real world network? And uh, we measure for the RMA system Cray using the DMAP library. 89% of uh, our expected outputs are actually observed when running the test on the network. For InfiniBand, around 94%, and uh, for Portal 4, for which we don't have a specific hardware, but we run it over a traditional network configured with UDP, we get also around uh, 89, 90%. So, uh, we then investigated, uh, we believe that this, this models well the existing behaviors of networks, and we also identified what, uh, why certain behaviors are not observed. So one reason is that there exists some non-triggerable interleavings of the actions. So be because we cannot control the schedule, scheduler in these RMA networks, uh, we cannot uh, delay uh, and introduce interleavings between actions generated by the same uh, remote statement. So for example, between a read and a write, we cannot uh, introduce there a, a random delay, for example. But uh, probably by running the test several times and under uh, different stress conditions of the network, uh, this, uh, 
this uh, cause will uh, reduce its impact. And uh, the second uh, reason we identified is that certain networks, such as DMAP, offer additional guarantees for some of the statements under certain uh, par uh, parametric uh, uh, threshold. So we could easily extend our model to capture these, uh, these behaviors, uh, but we choose not to because these, these guarantees are specific to, the, to a certain library. Given that this new weak memory model that we introduce, it opens new opportunities for research. And as future work, we can, uh, for example, automatically reason about RMA programs to infer which flashes are necessary or which flashes are redundant, uh, such that a certain specification is, uh, is, uh, is satisfied. And also, it helps test cur current implementations of the systems. So our contribution is this new memory model for core RMA, for RMA systems and uh, the evaluation framework, which automatically generates tests and uh, compares our model with the existing network. We observe that uh, the model and the network behaviors correspond quite well. Uh, thank you, and I'm open for questions.